I'm Audie Hall for no longer being an emotional support daughter. My parents, 54 male, 51 female, do not have a good marriage. Every now and then they seem to enjoy one another, but for the most part they despise each other. It's been that way since I, 22 female, was a kid. In addition, my relationship with my mother isn't the greatest. We love one another, but she's been pretty abusive for much of my life. For my childhood, something my dad has liked to do is vent to me about my mother. After just about every argument, I have to listen to him talk on and on about how evil, mean and controlling she is. He even likes to say that God will probably punish her by hurting me and Slash or my siblings. I absolutely despise this. As a kid who was being mistreated but still had hopes for my mom, it broke my heart and made me scared for myself and my siblings. There were some seriously heavy issues between them that, as a child, I should have been shielded from, not confronted with. As an adult, I can now see that my dad isn't the innocent angel he makes himself out to be. Half the time, they're both in the wrong. There are even times when I agree with my mother's perspective entirely, but my dad just expects me to listen to him vent and sympathize with him, regardless of the situation. Here's where I might be the a-hole. A few days ago, I finally told him how I felt. I told him that as his daughter, I didn't feel that I had any place being privy to his and my mom's marital issues. I told him that it wasn't my business. He was highly offended. He said that I was being cold-hearted just like my mother, that one day I'd need somebody to talk to. My response to this was, well, I have friends. He was visibly hurt by this. It was harsh, I know. I probably shouldn't have said it but I'm not sure what else I could have said to communicate my position on the matter. He also brought up the fact that he always defends me from my mother and her mistreatment. This is true. I can't stop feeling guilty because even though he shouldn't have vented to me when I was a kid, I guess now it's more appropriate since I'm an adult. But I still just don't want to hear it. So, am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. I don't comment on these posts often, but I have been where you are. Your dad might protect you from your mom, but what is done slash doing is flat out emotional mistreatment and manipulation. And if he was really protecting you, not sure how abusive your mom may be, then he would have done something to change slash get you away from the situation. Hold your boundaries firm, love. They're healthy ones. Thank you so much. I honestly do resent the fact that he didn't do more to protect me as a child. It's been hard learning to put up boundaries, but I'm taking it one step at a time. Opie, it would probably be a good idea to look up covert incest. That's the term used for what you described in your post. You'll be able to find a lot of advice on how to set slash maintain boundaries. It helped me immensely when I got into adulthood to finally learn what my mom did to me. Not day hall. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but you have two abusive parents, not just one. And as their child, you are the most inappropriate person in the world for either parent to be venting their marriage woes too. I really hope that you can get some distance between yourself and your parents. I don't think it's good for you to be close to either one of them. I also hope you can get yourself into therapy, because you really need it. Being around so much mistreatment can really skew your perspective on acceptable ways to treat people. The way your father is treating you is unacceptable. Do not be afraid to put yourself first and to protect yourself. You deserve it. I definitely plan to seek therapy once I moved out. Thank you for your reassuring words. 100% not a hull. He said that I was being cold-hearted just like my mother and that one day I'd need somebody to talk to. I'm gonna take a wild guess here and say that he doesn't listen and sympathize when you have problems. He just cares about you confirming that is always right. Very narcissistic behavior. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to split expenses proportionally with my brother slash roommate now I have a job? My brother and I are both university students. I'm in third year, he's in second. His university is about an hour from mine, so when the thing began last year, we agreed that instead of leaving student housing up to chance, we would meet halfway and rent a place at the midpoint between our units. We chose a fairly cheap area and got an entire house, including bills, for £600 a month. We were paying £300 per month each, as neither of us were employed, both lost our jobs due to the thing. So we were living off student finance, which is about 2300 per 4 months. I'm submitting my dissertation in a month. 
have received a job offer for full-time work beginning in June. Despite the pay being entry-level, it is still above minimum wage. Given my new job, my brother has said that we should start splitting rent proportionally. However, given his only consistent income is student finance, this means he has just under 600 per month, while I'm earning that per week, so I'll be paying 80-90% to 90 of everything. Now, if rent was some huge amount, say 1000 per month, I would see his point a little better. But I feel like 300 per person per month is completely reasonable for him, as it's about half of his monthly budget. If I were to pay for everything, that would diminish my own ability to both save and spend, which would delay me potentially moving out. Plus, it doesn't seem fair that he'll be paying 50 to 100 pounds per month while I'm paying 500 to 550 pounds for the same space. I did offer a few compromises, but he rejected them all, saying that as I'll be earning around 600 pounds per week, it's more than reasonable for me to pay 500 to 550, as that is less than a week of earning for me. And this saying that I'm being tight with money and unfair but not splitting fairly. I've said it's being whiny and entitled, and that we've always split 50-50. That shouldn't change because I'm earning more. He said that he agreed to split 50-50 when we were both living off finance, but now I have a well-paying job. It's entitled of me to expect him to pay for half of everything when I could pay for everything with less than one-fourth of my overall salary. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. And if your brother doesn't like it, he can move out and live somewhere else. That said, it would be a nice thing for you to be generous to your brother and pick up a little bit more than half so that he can save some financial relief, but not to the point that it cripples your own finances. Not the a-hole, but a little compassion goes a long way, especially in times like these when almost everyone is struggling. He is your brother. Looking at the numbers, it wouldn't hurt you financially as much or hurt your chances of moving out if you pay a little more than half like about 400 pounds. But it would be considerable relief for him to get that extra spending money not live hand to mouth. Besides, he would probably be graduating in a year and won't need the extra help or be dependent on financial aid. That being said, if you still can't justify spending extra, it's better to end things now rather than harboring resentment. It would be better for your overall relationship with your brother. Not day hole. If you're practically paying all of the rent under his new plan, I would just move out. It doesn't make sense for you to play nanny to somebody. Not day hole. It's entitled of me to expect him to pay for half of everything. It's entitled of your brother to expect you to finance his life. If you two weren't related, would he expect a stranger to finance his life? No. We don't know that the brother wouldn't expect a stranger to support him. Have you read some of these stories? It makes me more confident that I'm justified being a misanthrope. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my mom off and making her cry? So, my, female late 20s, relationship with my parents has always been weird at best. My mom likes to, among other things, criticize me and generally make me feel incompetent and small, mostly about cleaning and clothes. While my dad acts like he doesn't give a crap, except for when I do something that annoys him or when he needs me to do something for him. It's always been like that. Anyway, a little more than a year ago, my partner, 30 male, and I moved in together into an apartment about 10 minutes drive away from my parents. Since then, I've had to beg them to visit, even on my birthday, and I've only managed to convince them three times. A few days ago, they came to visit. Now, every time they come, my mom finds something to criticize. This time it was my kitchen, which I'd not had a chance to clean after lunch. She started with, Opie, the state of your kitchen. She asked if she could clean it. I admit I shouldn't have let her, but I was tired and thought, well, if you're going to witch about it not being clean, at least do something about it. So she did, all the while mocking me for stupid things. Important note, I wouldn't have minded if this wasn't just the latest event of her making me feel totally incompetent of leaving on my own. The whole time of the visit, my dad was sitting on a couch, scowling. If you ask him anything, he just shrugged and was asking every five minutes, including just when he stepped into the apartment, if they could go home now. When I asked him, aren't you glad to see your only kid after a long time? He replied, eh, I see you on Facebook every day. We don't chat on Facebook, so I guess he meant that he sees my profile picture. And when I asked him if he'd like to see my balcony garden, which I'm insanely proud of, he said, I don't give a crap. Well, the next day, my mom called me. I wasn't going to say anything because I hate fighting with my parents. But when she, 
As always, open to conversation with. Why do you never call me? Call her weekly, if not daily. I just couldn't hold it in. I wasn't yelling. I wasn't rude. I calmly said something along the lines of, Yeah, I didn't call you because I'm not exactly happy about what happened yesterday. Her. What's wrong? Me. Well, for one, Dad was behaving horribly, and you always find something to criticize me about, making me feel incompetent. Her. I could hear her crying with a passive-aggressive tone of voice. Well, if you feel that way, maybe just call me some other time. Let's hang up before you hurt me even more. Click. So, in a way, I feel like I was in the right. But on the other hand, I feel bad for making my mom cry. Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. You have a very toxic dynamic going with your parents. And pushing back like you did is the only way to change it. Have your brows off r slash narcissistic parents for more advice. Every journey starts with a single step. Thanks. I mean, you know this is how they are, so why are you even begging them to be in your life? They're not going to morph into some set of super kind supportive parents all of a sudden. This is who they are. I'm not saying that's awesome. In fact, it sucks, which is why at the part where you said you had to beg them to come over, I was like, why? But you aren't doing anything different than your mom, actually. You're both huffing and puffing and sighing and being all passive-aggressive upset via your criticism that the other isn't behaving how you want them to. So everyone sucks here. I would just like to have a normal relationship with my parents. I know. I'm slowly but surely coming to the realization that nothing will ever change. But it's hard. Every kid wants to feel accepted by their parents. Not day -hole. You just told what you felt. Your mom sounds very narcissistic. And forget about your dad. If he doesn't want a relationship with you, then let him be and don't try to force it. Stop inviting them over. Call slash text your mom, but don't try to meet up. The thing is, they'll emotionally blackmail me when I try to go low contact. And we do have moments when we get along great. And it's these moments I would like to have with them more often. But then they pull crap like this. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to even entertain the idea of dressing my kids up to see their grandparents? Their grandparents are my biological parents. My parents and I have spent some time apart. I stopped speaking to them around 2011, and we got back in touch in 2018 when I sent them invitations to my wedding. I have three kids, ages 11, 7, and 5. We've not seen my parents in person for a while due to current restrictions, but two weekends ago, we were able to meet them. I felt the meeting was fine. However, afterwards, I texted them to say we should meet up again soon, suggesting this weekend. They said yes, but the response was very curt, and I felt they might be upset with me. I asked if something was wrong, but they insisted it was fine. Fast forward to today, and we're planning to meet up again tomorrow. I was confirming they were still good to meet, and mom made some comments about making sure the kids put in an effort this time. I thought she was talking about their attitude, so I called her to ask if my kids insulted her somehow. But she said that she meant appearance. She feels that last weekend, when my kids all showed up in trainers, jeans, and a hoodie, they were being disrespectful, not putting in the effort. I said, Mom, they're kids for Pete's sake. Mom maintained that there was a certain level of respect accompanying clothing, and them wearing anything less than smart casual was disrespectful, considering that she and my dad, as well as my husband and I, put in effort. I refused to even let her finish half of her sentences, saying I wouldn't make my kids dress up to see them. Mom became frustrated and ended the call. But I then received a string of texts about how it would be nice if I could convince the kids to look nice when they see her, saying it's not a lot to ask and it teaches good habits. And even if I wouldn't do that, the absolute least I could have done was let her finish a sentence. I said she should say something else then, and she said I was being very rude by not letting her have an opinion and shutting her down like I did, and expects an apology. Info. Mom defines smart casual as shirts with buttons or trousers for the boys not both at once, and a skirt or a nice top for my daughter. She says the trainers can stay if they must. She feels that a button shirt or a skirt is not a lot to ask, particularly in summer, when a skirt or short-sleeved shirt would be appropriate for the weather. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. What a boomer complaint. Ask if they like no contact better. 
added to add. I want to see your children, but not to actually know them. Dress them up like good props and be sure they don't talk either. Your children should dress up to show respect for me. The grandmother they do not love and hardly know, due to my own prior bad conduct. Your mom, the a-hole. Not the a-hole. She's correct that there are times where clothing and dressing up is a sign of respect. A weekend visit with close family is not that. If y'all were going to a fancy restaurant, that would be different, but a close family visit? They should be allowed to be comfy as should all of you. Not the a-hole. Unless your mother is Queen Elizabeth II, I wouldn't worry about appearances. If your kids are comfortable, clean, and dressed appropriately for the weather, what else matters? She should be grateful she gets to see them at all. I think sometimes she thinks she's the queen. She defines smart casual as a shirt with buttons for the boys and a skirt or blouse for my daughter, none of which would be appropriate for our typical activities. Parker Beach. Not day hall and I see why you stopped speaking to them for some time. It is sad that she is focusing on clothing versus the actual people she's seeing.